Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to call to order the regular board workshop meeting for March 19th, 2024, here at uh, Mark's Hall at 931. Uh, Kathy, would you lead us in the invocation and pledge of allegiance, please? Oh. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a board as we make decisions to benefit our community. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 A pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Okay, you'd like to have the roll call, please. Sure. Lori Dalton here. Dottie Deerwester. Present on Zoom. Uh, Kathy Gregory. Present. Todd Lombardi. Absent. Absent. Okay. Uh, Russell McAllister. Present. Louis Nichols. Here. Cindy O'Brien. Present. Rod Smith. Present. Dwayne Trotter. Present. Lee Morris. Present. Okay, I'd like to open it up for public comment, and it's limited three minutes to the uh, workshop items only. Please give your name and address. I'm Patty Jensen, 1705. Please pull that down. There you go. Is that better? That's better. Uh, Patty Jensen, 1705 Indiana Avenue. And first of all, I'd like to thank you for all your service because I know being on a, the board of trustees is a thankless job, but I want to thank you. I also am here because I'm um, really interested in updating the directory. And I, I've seen online the... Um, the reasons that we can't update it or we shouldn't update it. But I also would like to see it be updated. I posted something on Facebook and I know you don't monitor the Facebook pages, but um, there were somewhere between 125 and 150 comments that people would wanted the updated. Um, I did see a couple that were a negative, but for the most part, people in the park want an updated directory. And I'm, and I'm more than willing to pay for it. Everybody pays for it. So it's not, a, you have the all the information. So I just don't quite understand why we can't get an updated directory. That's all I have. Great, thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Karen Finkbeiner, 1706 Wisconsin Avenue. I have three issues, so I will try to talk as fast as I can. Um, concern, pictorial, and the only address phone number directory. Um, my suggestion is to do a survey by using the annual form that we all complete with our name and who does our lawn, holds a key, that form, and then poll the residents ask, do you want an updated residence directory? Asking how often would you want a pictorial um, every year or every two years or an other, just to poll the residents. My reasoning, social connections, visual connections, facilitate neighbors, members of TE to know each other. My second concern is cameras on people in the pool. Um, and my concern is that this camera, if it is absolutely needed, should only be viewed for and by for security reasons. Um, my reasoning is that I and most of my friends do not want to be watched by others. People are applying sunscreen, moving about in chairs or bouncing around in the swimming pool. Um, we feel is it a, it's an invasion of our privacy. As a woman, I want protection from my park. Do not facilitate voyeurism. Uh, men and children also deserve this protection. And I just feel that the cameras 
should not be viewed by all the people um, at the pool. Uh, number three, my concern, and I've brought this up before, dogs access to leash freedom. And my suggestion continues to be to use the TENS property as an area dogs can run, chase a ball until a different purpose is decided. Owners of dogs continue to need to follow the rules in cleaning up after their pets. Owners of dogs must have their own liability of their pets. This could be posted. Put in two or three benches or picnic tables for people to use. My reasoning, our park has the ability to offer dog freedom, to run, get needed exercise. Our park encourages socialization of residents. This would help people get out and know each other. It is therapeutic for others to watch dogs have fun. Our park needs to facilitate as many activities as possible for people, social connection. Some people can't play games or join in club activities, but they love watching a dog have fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do I have any other public comments? Do I have anybody on Zoom that would like to make a public comment? Hearing none, I'll close public comments. Uh, let's jump on into the uh, responses. No, I'm not going to do that today. Uh, report from the standing committees. Can I ask? Can I just ask? No. I'm going to bypass that today. Standing committee. Good morning. Uh, I'm not Barbara Sewell, but I'm taking her spot today. So I'm Ruth Coppins, 6823 Massachusetts Street. I am here today representing the board committee of the Treasure Barn. We held our regularly scheduled meeting of the Treasure Barn March 7th. We had 26 volunteer members present. Meeting dates for the remainder of the year were set with no meetings in July, August, and September, as we're officially closed then. We wish to thank our liaison, Kathy Gregory, for the glimpse of the treasure barn that she presented to you at the board meeting last time. Uh, we appreciate the acknowledgement. Uh, and further, we would like to acknowledge those who helped <coughs> clean the sorting or kitchen area floor at the treasure barn where we work uh, three days a week, namely Bill, our maintenance manager, coordinated that. And to our knowledge, it had never been done in the last 10 years. So boy, does it look nice. So thank you, Bill, <clears throat> and those that helped. Uh, Treasures report uh, from 37 to 316, our collection was $2,971 and 50 cents. Our current balance that we have had this season is $39,711.36. Now back to the Treasure Barn uh, meeting uh, actions. At our March meeting, it was moved and seconded and approved that we approve the use of $35,000 from our sales proceeds this season to be used for the planned renovation of the restrooms at the northeast corner of the large hall. Our understanding is that this project will be completed this summer. We would also like to bring to your attention the state of the restrooms in the treasure barn area itself. Since the building does belong to the park now, these restrooms also need to comply with handicap regulations. They are now open to the public for use and our volunteers of which we usually have 15 to 20 on work days. We do have volunteers that need handicap facilities as well as customers that need handicap facilities. And further, we would be willing to approve monies from the our proceeds from the rest of the year to go toward this, if that would be considered by the board at this point. So we do think that that's a need that they should handicap accessibly should be complied with. So thank you. 
Any questions? No, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, could I have uh, clubs and organizations, please? <laughs> Uh, Terry Ellenberger, 6810 Massachusetts, Cook's Night Out. While everything is gearing down, we're getting ready to gear up. <laughs> Our uh, first meal will be April 11th. Tickets will be sold the week prior to that. Um, just wanted to, you know, acknowledge that, uh, hope all the clubs and stuff through the season have taken advantage of using the dishwasher I've used it several times in the things that I've done, and it works pretty spiffy, let me tell you. And then also, I did put it on Facebook, but the guys are sporting new shirts, clean shirts, and a new color. So <laughs> they are our sharp-dressed maintenance men. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I have any other clubs or organizations that would like to comment? <clears throat> Carry none, I'll close uh, clubs and organizations. We'll jump right into the workshop items. Uh, the first uh, item. Dwayne? Yes. Dwayne, uh, good morning. This is Dottie. Um, am I able to add to the agenda? Mm -hmm. works? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'd like to add an agenda item reserving functions. That's the title. Thank you. No. Do we have it? No. What, 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 no. It's an EP38. Do we have to have one? Okay. The first item we have is the uh, proposed O&M uh, budget discussion. Lou? So we have a presentation primarily put together by uh, park manager. Based on our income that we approved. You want to go ahead and do it? I'd be more than happy to. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Sorry. If you're looking at me like, what are you doing? No. We did this together. Okay. So if you'll open to the first page, uh, folks, um, we did a handout. If those of you who haven't gotten one on the back, that's kind of the, the gist of the, uh, the budget that's going to be in our handout. So if you want to grab one to go along with it. But first... Could you go to the uh, first page, please? Um, we're recommending a uh, an assessment for this year that is increased by 5% over last year. I believe that uh, in years past, you, uh, you passed a five-year budget that included a 5% increase in not only the assessment, but in contracts and fees uh, uh, to, uh, to be implemented. Um, I believe that on the income side, our contracts for marina storage units, our storage lot, uh, the contracts for the post office, the um, marina, the, the church, Where's and that? Uh, have been increased uh, commensurate with the 5%. Um, this year, we're going to do our best to keep within the 5% uh, increase, but we wanted to make sure that we understand that of that 1338.44, 966.32 actually goes towards capital outlay and our uh, operating budget. We're facing a 7% increase in utilities, Legal fees, 4%. Insurance, uh, we're facing a 10% reduction this year, but I want to caution you that if another hurricane comes through, it'll become an unstable market once again. Payroll, 3% wages. We're seeing a 7% to 10% benefit escalator. Cable TV, internet, 3% escalator is part of the contract, <clears throat> which means that every uh, anniversary of the contract, it goes up 3%. Maintenance, we're seeing a 30% increase. 
Part of that is that because it, uh, uh, the maintenance uh, department takes care of maintenance of the not only the marina and the park, but the storage lot. And it was just, uh, things are not getting newer, unfortunately, and they're requiring more maintenance uh, uh, to keep them uh, biffy. Capital outlay, we decreased by 18%. Trash removal has a 7% escalator in it for uh, curbside trash removal in all the dumpsters. And uh, recreation was a 9% increase. Office accounting and tractual services is up considerably because we uh, made a new uh, account called contractual services, where, uh, which we did not have before, and everything went into a catch-all bucket. This way we'll be able to spread it out a little bit and uh, track it. Things like the copier maintenance, um, accounting, bookkeeping, that kind of thing all goes into that, uh, that account. Uh, cable TV costs are three seventy two twelve a year. That's at uh, approximately thirty one oh one a month, and that equals the assessment of uh, with a five percent increase that we're uh, recommending. There is no other increase in our uh, in our assessment. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring to your attention that the um, the cost for cable and internet at retail uh, from Spectrum is $114 a month. So our cost is $31 a month. But essentially, if you were to get cable, TV, and internet just on your own, uh, that includes, it's basically, it's more than what our $114 a month, and I believe our monthly fees for... Uh, for trailer estates in total are only $111. So it's like getting the rest of trailer estates for free. Anyways, I just wanted to make sure we understood that that is a, a very uh, good bargain to get uh, bulk internet and, uh, and cable TV, but it does take up a big chunk of our budget, almost a third. And you gotta remember that of that 1338, 966 goes to uh, operating, uh, maintenance and capital outlay. In this capital outlay that we talked about uh, a couple of uh, meetings ago, there is the master planning uh, funding for that. Anything that I missed? Thank you got it very much. Lee, I have some questions about recreation. Does this would be a good time to talk about that? Sure. Okay. Um, what most of you don't know is that I presented a budget for next season to Lee. I'm not sure if anybody else did, but I did. Um, this year we did, we funded, we will have funded 28 events. Next year, we are programmed to have 15 or 16 events. It's been cut drastically. Um, so the requested budget was 25,000 from seasonal rec, which added um, a, a 2,000 plus cushion for things that happen like food costs and everything else that may go up. I'm not sure what, what continuing rec requested, but I'm looking at recreation going up to 45998 when it was only 422 last year. There's a 9% increase in that account. And uh, basically because of the fact that uh, if you're ha we saw fewer events, in, mm -hmm. in, especially right. in seasonal rec, right. but the cost of the entertainment had gone up drastically. Right, but to me that equals out. I guess my, my question was, they, there was done, I mean, except for the contract, if we're going to do a DJ for Poker Run and a DJ if we're going to do the uh, Beach Party Happy Hour next year, um, all those were added into it. So I'm not sure if we need that much money in the rack. I mean, I'm looking at overall cost savings. And I have to, I mean, I'm, I'm one to look at savings for the district. 
Um, I don't know what continuing rec requests. Right, but well, not only continuing rec, but health and welfare is in there also. And yes. it and wasn't. Have, it wasn't in, in the breakdown. It's well, it wasn't in the breakdown. It's in the second page. It's it's, it's a second. It's it's a separate. Separate page. Did you? I mean, health and welfare has their own budget. Right. I'm She's sorry. Separate. I'm sorry. You're correct. I'm sorry. So, that, I mean, that I, bad. not that. I mean, the money is great. No, I know we have to. We don't have to you know, spend it, and that's fine too. But I guess I'm just. Well, part of this is that a uh, we didn't have a uh, we didn't have a definitive schedule from uh, continuing rec on okay. what the events that were going to be going on okay. uh, as we go forward. Um, the other thing is is that part of this part of this, and and I I don't mean I'm not trying to be mean about no, saying this. Fine. I don't I don't believe that the we usually add another event or two if we have time or, or something comes up that becomes a, a interesting thing to do. And we'd like to be able to have the budget in order to do that. Okay. Secondly, uh, I believe that, you know, there could be a different trustee in place in the la latter part of this budget that may uh, re go back to different uh, funding. And I've got to make sure that we, we have that covered if that's the case. So again, I'm not trying to be mean or, you know, no, saying that fine. there's, but in in all eventuality, if next budget year, if the um, number of events stays steady and the budget stays steady, then I would have no trouble reducing that budget account to the actual in, in that respect. No, that's fine. I just wanted to bring that up. There's a lot of unknowns and that's yeah. kind of why we're- No, that's fine. That. Okay. Thank so you. Is, so is it normal for us to have an assessment every year? Yes. Yeah. Because okay. since to. moving here, and I'm new, I've only been here since 21, but um, I don't know. I guess I. Well, an assessment's how we fund trailer estates yeah. operations, period. And uh, there's income from the storage lots and the marina and everything else. But a lot of that, uh, it, while it helps to offset the assessment, mm -hmm. it goes to the, its maintenance uh, uh, also. So the their assess where is their. That income shown on here. It's. Yep. It's. The I mean, not budget. <clears throat> it's up here. Fine on top. Right on top. The... Income from marina slips, income from storage lot leases, okay. and storage from facility leases. It's all right there on top. Folks, are you seeing that? Yes. Okay. We have to have a balanced budget. So it's all of that. Who voted for the 5% on the assessment? Is that a great 5%? <laughs> You're not on. Story of his life. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> um, <clears throat> was that a great, we were going to do it no matter what, or was that a max no more than 5%? It was a straight 5%. Mm -hmm. We, we didn't go anything with a max. Yeah, but we're going to have to take a look at that because if you look at your first sheet, there where mm -hmm. everything's gone up from oh. anywhere from seven to, right. you know, seven to 10%. We're going to have to revisit that to see if we're not going to go straight cost increase. Yeah. I think that in the future, we'd like to look at as opposed to just having a straight 5% escalator, go to the actual. Of uh, of what the budget needs, as opposed to that, it may be three percent, it may be seven percent, but forcing a five percent may not be in the best interest of trailer estates. Correct. Well, I mean, I, I look at a budget, of course, as a guideline. It's not a guarantee right. that we're going to spend that money or that we're going to get that income, other than from the assessment, the way we set that up. For example, if we would run into a situation where our income was greater than our expenses for this budget year, what would happen? Would we just put that in the general fund? Would we come back to the board and and reallocate that money? Or what happens with that if there is a... Uh, if, there's, if there's income over expenditures, that money goes into reserves. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is 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 generally the way it the way it goes, but it can go anywhere where the board... But it would not go. have any impact on the assessment. No, correct. Unless, year. yeah, no. To return no. money back from the assessment would it probably would be, it would require a large 
a large um, amount of money to go back. It just, well, and I'm not saying to, yeah. to pay somebody back for their assessment. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying take it into consideration in the next budget year. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, do you have to pay that one at, at one lump sum, or can the residents pay it monthly? So the assessment is added on to the Manatee County uh, tax taxes, bill. Right. It's by your taxes. I'm talking to the yeah. as, like, as taxes, and right. uh, it can be paid in different months with a discount. Right. And like we did it this year. Like like Pretty was much. done this year. Okay. If if it uh, or you know some people don't pay it, which starts another you know, mm -hmm. but the uh, uh, I don't believe that you can pay them. Help me out here. I don't believe there's a quarterly. There are yeah a few quarterly payments. Few few properties on quarterly payments, but we don't pay the county quarter. But no, that's the something county. between the residents and, and the, the appraiser's office. Yeah, the mm -hmm. collect not really, tax yeah. collector, not us. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just looking out for the lower income people, but it's just a part of. Well, it, it's added. So so our assessment as a non ad valorem tax is added to the regular taxes that the right. county operates with in the school system. And so um, it's, it's not just us. It's, it's, uh, it's everything that the tax. Uh, and it's through the county. Just and it's like always done through the county. Okay. We, All right. Can I ask one more question? Sure. When it comes to um, the trash removal, we all know we've had some issues with our dumpsters and the dumpster pulls. How many extra pulls did we go through this year and how much more are we paying at contract because of it? I don't think we've reached the max yet this year. Yeah, we reached it yet? So no, we still We have. just checked on that prior to the uh prior to, to finalizing the budget uh Bill and I and we're actually below the amount and we're going to make it through the season with okay. the uh, with the projected amount of pulls. So that contract should be uh good in in uh without any overages but the problem is is where they overload the dumpster leave the mattresses and everything mm -hmm. else alongside the dumpsters mm -hmm. that the crew has to go back mm -hmm. out and reposition yeah. it well we as as the park manager as an, an outside set of eyes looking into this first of all we're under contract with waste pro for the dumpsters and the curbside pickup i believe for another two two years mm -hmm. And they did not show any interest on breaking the contract or renegotiating the contract. But I would like to see possibly um, going to curbside pickup for not only trash, but yard waste and, uh, and recycling. Mm -hmm. Just the same as the rest of Manatee County does. And eliminate the dumpsters. Mm -hmm. But that's a discussion for another time. Okay, thanks. I'll make a comment and the assessment. And the people look at what the assessments are at twelve hundred dollars a year. Go to any other park mm -hmm. where you don't own your land. Right. And I my son in law's mother pays in a cheap park, pays five hundred and fifty dollars a month fees. So she's paying six thousand dollars a year and she doesn't even own the land. So I mean from the, the cost of the assessment, we're really uh <laughs> look pretty good uh, mm -hmm. versus the other parks. Well, and as Lee said, you know, in, in Ohio, I think cable or not cable, but internet alone went up to $119 just for internet with no cable. And that's, that includes all of our maintenance and operations and everything with the cable and everything down here for less. So one of the things that, and, and I know this may sound, you know, a little bit uh, fluffy, but one of the things that I noticed going through this budget um, is that, yeah, at $111 a month, you guys are getting a bargain for what goes on here. I mean, I just can't, you know, I know what I pay at my own house, and it's a lot more, so. You should move here. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dwayne said no. <laughs> All right. Any questions uh, uh, on anything else? Again, this. so what's going to happen is that we're going to uh, – Give you some time to vet it and uh, formulate any questions. We'll bring this back to a workshop uh, in the next uh, in the next couple of uh, meetings, and then our 
final uh, or our public hearing, I believe is going to be May 21st for adoption. And it will be adopted on the, at that meeting if uh, uh, all goes well. Um, I want to uh, make sure that we understand that this is a proposed uh, budget. This is not written in stone. It cannot go up, but it can go down. We have that revised schedule on here, don't we, Mr. Mm -hmm. Morris? Yes, sir. Okay, that'll come up. Okay, the next item we have there was the uh, discuss the new telephone directory, which is myself. Uh, the reason I didn't allow any comments is because I knew it was on the uh, agenda. Uh, I want to start off that I do agree we should have a telephone directory. However, there are some issues. Um, I have received umpteen calls that says, I do not want my information mm -hmm. published in yeah. the telephone directory. Uh, we've also contacted the district's council for uh, what information could really be put in there. Uh, if it's, uh, I just forgot the word, uh, public records, Optics. and it is. Uh, so whatever you put in that telephone directory is public information. Anybody can have that public information. Uh, historically, Trailer States has gone out and purchased about 500 telephone directories every year, except for the years we don't publish them. Uh, out of the 500 telephone directories that we purchase or have made up, out of the 3,000, uh, 2,500 to 3,000 residents that we have here during season, I still have over 250 directories that are still sitting in that office unused. Mm -hmm. The biggest run we just had is when it was announced that we're not going to have a telephone directory yep. and we had 12 of them sold in a week. <laughs> yep. Thank you very much. Uh, if you take a look at the percentages of three. Mm -hmm. 2,500 to 3,000 residents, 500 are made, 2,500 are left over, not even used. Mm -hmm. It's it's pathetic. Anyway, uh, yeah. with that, um, there was uh, confusion from the, the social media. Uh, the one was the photo directory versus the telephone directory. Mm -hmm. Clubs and organizations can do the photo directories that is not done by the uh, Board of Trustees or Trailer Estates. Mm -hmm. uh, any club can take that on. Uh, I think it's a great program. If they do, they can make money at it, whatever they want. The telephone directory is different. That is published by the Trailer Estates Board. Mm -hmm. um, my main point is, as soon as this booklet is published, it's out of date. It's incomplete. It's never updated. You can't update it. There's no way that we're going to do that. So what I'm proposing, and I'll have Mr. Morris look into it a little bit farther, but uh, what I want to do is put the telephone directory on the website. That website is uh, will have a separate column there for the telephone directory, which will be a... Uh, password protected portal. You're going to have to have a user's name as well as a uh, password to get into that directory. If I'm correct, you can download that information that we update in there consistently. I believe, is, that, is that right? I believe so. I'm not sure they're going to need a username, but it would be somewhat password protected. Okay. And I do believe it would be printable. We're still working on that with yeah. our web uh, provider. Okay. But trailer states would update all of that information for those individuals or owners, residents who wish to opt in to a telephone directory. I cannot, I'm sorry, the board cannot direct mm -hmm. everybody to be in that telephone mm -hmm. directory without getting ourselves into trouble. So I'm going to open it up to the rest of the board to see just what they would have their input on. Um, I looked at all the comments on um, social media. And speaking about 
people needing volunteers, I can I can tell you what I do for my volunteers. If you have a smartphone, you have contacts. You build your contacts. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Very simple. And I know I know this. I do. I use the 2022, um, but it's not current. It isn't. And it just kind of blows my mind that of all the issues what we have in this place, why a phone directory has caused all this when it's been sitting in the office since 2022 and no one's kicked them up. They've been there and it's been publicized we have them. So why didn't, why didn't you go get them? Um, but use your smartphones. It's a great way to build your contacts. But a lot of residents do not want their information publicized that trustees don't have to have our cell phones publicized unless we choose to. And that's an option for every resident, and you should be wise to do so. That's all my comments. Lee, is the public, is the resident profile this public record? Mm -hmm. There's an old saying, though, just because you can doesn't mean you should. I, I, I'm not saying that that's what we should publish. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I just was curious if it's, mm -hmm. if it is public. I'm I'm not in support of putting a phone directory on the website, even if it's password protected, because then you have created an electronic version that can be easily manipulated into, like, you're making faces, but you just take the no, PDF, I'm, you PDF, okay. and you, PD, you take the PDF and you convert it into an Excel file, and you now have everybody's data all in one spot real easy. And that was one of the things we were avoiding with creating a mailing list of email addresses at one time was because we didn't want to make it easy because of public record. And this does that. Well, is, I, is... I would be very careful on what you put into that telephone mm -hmm. directory. There's no way in fact that I would put my... Uh, personal email address in there uh, just for the phishing. And I'll just give you the latest example. I, I don't know how it happened. Mm -hmm. I was out on the boat. All of a sudden, the rest of the trustees all received an email <laughs> from the chairman of the board of trustees that uh, please send the gift cards. Or are you in the office right now? If you are, please send the gift cards. It was pure phishing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Stupidest thing I've seen, boat. but Yep. Uh, I would be very careful on publishing your private email addresses in any telephone. Well, book. yeah, no, you don't want email addresses, but I'm saying I don't I'm I don't want my name, my address, and my phone number on the internet. It's bad enough my name and phone number's out there. And there's reasons why I volunteered for it. I signed up for it. I knew what I was doing when I signed up as a trustee. But as a Joe resident, I don't want my name, address, and phone number. That's why I want to go to the opt-in out. Mm -hmm. well, either you either too, do or don't. Mm -hmm. The thing too with the web is if you put it out there and you've got a place that says residents addresses or phone book, whatever, anybody can come in and see that. And God only knows there are how many hackers out there if they really have a reason to get in, can get in and get it. Well, and, and they're saying they're, they would be password protecting it, right? But but that's just like the 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 codes for the you know bocce equipment. People not outside the park knew the codes, and they should come in and used it. So, well, you wouldn't even need the the password. I mean, like I say, with hackers out there, these these mass marketers, they're not dumb. They have people out there they, that that hack that stuff and get in and get those lists. Well, most of the people that have talked to me, probably 30 or more, have told me they want the directory uh, just to know. Uh, and their solution was to have it by street address so that we knew who lived down the street from us to make it more personable. But what is the difference between when you guys chose to print that and today? You chose to print it a number of years. So what is different now? To make us the understand. previous boards, including myself, we just printed the book just to have the book, not knowing that it could have ended up into a lawsuit because I didn't want my information put in there and I could have sued the park. Now it's a different story. You can opt in or opt out. 
we're we're also realizing back back if we go back years ago, um, four or five iterations of the phone directory, we would sell out before January, and we were ordering a thousand of them. Then we slowly got into the thing where we had five or six hundred left. Why are we ordering a thousand? Because we're only selling four hundred. So then we cut it down to five hundred. And so now as we're moving forward through these iterations, we're at where we're selling, we've sold less than half in two years. And, and so that means we've sold 250 in two years. Um and, and it's slowly and we're and your eyes are opening up going, well, gee, you know, we realize we shouldn't be printing a thousand, we're printing five hundred. Now it's like you know, maybe we should only be printing 250. Well, at that point, is it worth the 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 I effort and the possible problems that we can have with legalities of it to continue? I I and, and it's not it's never going to be complete. It's never going to be 100 percent accurate. Well, another issue we get into, depending on how we do it, if we do it, owners. I mean, with what Russell and I run into in looking up owners on addresses that that we're looking at. It becomes a challenge because a lot of them are deceased, mm -hmm. uh, that type of thing in there. So, isn't the tax record show the owner or if they're deceased? Well, and people can look that up themselves. And it's yeah. 99 but cents. that's public record, yeah. right? right? And this phone book will be public record. I mean, the tax record just shows who paid the last tax, it doesn't mm -hmm. show who the owner is. And, and so, that do you want that information in your directory? Shows the tax record shows what. The owner wants as the mailing record. That it shows the owners, which could be an LLC with no names in it. Right. And, you know, I think what you want is a re is a resident. I mean, you could be. Does so the, the directory include renters? Yes. That were year-round renters. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. that they would never show on the tax record a, a right. annual renter. Well, and the renters change. Yeah. Right. For sure. Yeah, and that's that's part of the problem. Of how? Yeah. Why it gets outdated before it can even go to print. Right. So if we do the wish, of what. The 150 residents put on the social media, and I do this. We plant, we print it. It's out of date the day it's coming out. Mm -hmm. So it has none of the changes of all the renters coming in or the new owners. Unless you change so the it only way I can more. do that is put it on the website, constantly update that for those people who come in and sign their annual. Mm -hmm. I opt in to have my information put in there, or we don't have either. If we put it on, I, I, the right I'm, going how I can for do the, it. I'm going for neither because if we if we put it on the website in any form, we're going to make it easier for unscrupulous people to prey on our elderly residents. That's a good point. I, I, so I'm very much against the website, and I understand how outdated that is. I think Kathy has hit the nail on the head with most people have have um their their uh cell phones they put it in their con they you put it in your contacts you really don't need to know all 1100 people that are listed in the in the directory right now you don't call those 1100 people i think we've been moving towards a time when when we say oh there are people who aren't computer savvy savvy and, and this particular issue it's coming to a head right here right now but is it time to say, sorry, you're out of luck? I'm not sure it is. And my my question is, I agree. It sounds like it's more at risk as an electronic file than it is a piece of paper. So if you maintain that file, which I don't think is that hard to pull that information from access for the people that want it in there, just name, address, phone number, and maintain that file, how many how many sheets of paper? If you don't make a book, if you just print it out, how many paper, pages is it? Six? What forty on a? If it's let's say it's five hundred people, forty on a sheet. So what's that? Help, so tell people we'll print you the phone list for for two bucks if you come into the office and hand That's it over the counter. That there, here's here lies your problem. That is still a public oh, record Robert. that you are maintaining in an electronic format. So if I want a copy of the electronic format, you have to give it to me. Anybody. You must because you contain you maintain it 
in electronic format. You have to give have it to that. me. That's why I asked. We already yeah, have that. that well, anybody no. can come in and request this telephone book that, because it's a public So it's to be like anybody can come in and pre request the resident profile list already. if they want mm -hmm. already. But they're not all nice and pretty and formatted in just exactly. And it's much more risky. There's much more information on it, too. Oh, I don't dis I don't disagree with that, but it's it's harder to deal with, um, you know, twenty five hundred sheets of paper than it is what would be put on the website as a phone directory. Can I ask a question? You betcha. Can we possibly make this interactive and have Patty come up? Would the would you? And let me, let me ask why. And why? I'd like to know how all this came about. I mean, I'm I'm curious. I really am about a simple phone call. I'd like to have an updated directory. We're not going to be publishing a directory. No, there simple. was a posting but, by was it Lee or Dwayne saying that we were going to discuss it. No, it's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. No, on the agenda. Yeah. But 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 the agenda item came after the phone call. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. So so I'd like so to. Here we are. So is there a way, because I'd like to know the rationale for this. Maybe that's just me, but I'd like to know why all at once this has come out. I want. Well, no, yeah. I want. I want a telephone directory. I want an updated telephone directory. Yep. And then we're looking at, should we be printing a, a 2024 we telephone that, directory? The 30 people I talked to just want a directory that they can they can have. Uh, I think just said it, I want. Yeah. Well, again, but they're part of the residents do want, and that's why we're here to listen to what they want. And, you know, this uh, public information is what we are because we're a district park, you know. Okay, just, so, uh, so I'm going to say 500 are we afraid people of would public like to be in the telephone book. What do I do with the other 500 or 1,500 that don't want to be in the telephone book? Well, if we print the telephone book, like he said, and somebody comes in and wants it, we can print it off and give it to them. It doesn't have to be pre-printed in a spiral brown, which was probably the most expensive we could do. Uh, it could just be printed off a... It still then would be maintained as an electronic document. Printed? Look at it. When was the last time you got a white pages and yellow pages never. book? About I mean, that's the same thing. There's ways of getting that. I mean, even if you want to find, even if you know somebody's name, you can go out on the web mm -hmm. and probably get a phone number not associated with the park. Mm -hmm. You can go out and look at white pages or yellow pages or... Pay 99 a, cents and get the whole history of somebody's Right, name. yeah. Where do you go? I pay a dollar ninety nine. Uh, you pay a dollar well, ninety. I think the directory, though, should be like the owners of the the... Uh, residents, not okay. necessarily the the renter. It's going to be here for six months or so I'm year back or to, I'm back to opt in or opt out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of what? Of the, in the telephone directory, mm -hmm. what you just asked. Well, opt in. If we don't have a telephone directory, you can't opt in. So do we post right. the telephone directory? And that's where we're going. But you do we say? make one for 30 people? I no, you said 30 people. No, so. I just said people come up and talk to me and they tell me what they think is why I'm on the board. And I appreciate that. I do get a lot of feedback from people. Yeah. Now, a few people are afraid to talk to people on the board, to be honest with you. And they want us to listen to them. Right. And I don't know. You guys are just saying a blunt no without really listening. But so we're here to listen. That's pretty well, offensive. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I'm no, sorry. I think you yeah. were listening. I'm I, sorry. What you said was listening. Well, I just offered to put it on the web. So is that a dead no? no. Come on. Yeah. No, I mean, I we're, take offense to that also. Yeah. Well, Good. I apologize, but, you know, I take offense to a few things too. But it's, it's all in how I perceive it. I think I perceive things like some residents do because I'm not a full time. I'm not a, not a full time, but I'm not a, uh, uh, career board member okay i come from being a resident not too long ago so i look at things differently than you guys do and i think you guys should too you should you know it's we're here to serve them can, can we get back <laughs> i think it's so i think okay. we're straining a little bit here um, I, get, I have a comment that's what happens. please 
I, I think it's 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 a very simple question with no simple answer. Mm -hmm. Is is there's a segment of our population that would like a directory. It seems like it'd be nice to give it to them, but do you give it to them at the risk of putting the board in jeopardy from litigation and possibly someone getting a hold of this? That's it's it's just a risk that wasn't there. Right, good point. Ten years ago, it's just different. And I'm sorry. I I I I know. Trust me, I know plenty of people that like to pick the directory mm -hmm. up and look up phone numbers, and I feel like mm -hmm. we should be able to give that to them. But there's a lot of things I feel like we should be able to do and we can't do anymore. I feel like I should be able to go to Russell's house and talk to him about board issues, and I can't. So it's a different world than it was at one point. And we have to address it. We have to have to play in the field we're in, you know. But I'm sorry. Could, it's, but, it's, but if I could just clarify something. So since this information is part of public record, could a resident fill out, I'm not... Might as well say it. Could a resident come to the office and fill out a public records request and get all this information anyway? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. And they can. don't have to say why they want it. Right. Yeah. Well, and maybe anyone, I can clarify that. Yeah. I'm, yes. I mean, if it, so, but it's someone who says, I don't want it released, could stop it. They can't. No. no. So, no, so we're can't. not, so we're not really protecting anybody, nope. are we? No, because they can come right to the office and get it where they well, want yeah, it in a directory. Yeah, or still sit. got Daddy that wanted to speak. Yeah. But, well, okay. I want to finish yeah. that question first. Go ahead, Mr. Morris. So a public records request is for either written or electronic documents. We do not have uh, the, the database is, is not printed anywhere or extrapolated into an Excel worksheet or anything else. And there would be a cost associated with doing that. So yes, but there is no way to, if, if, uh, to get, uh, if there was a public records request for everybody in the park, we would have to print off each PP27 okay. at okay. the cost of 25 cents a sheet and research and everything else uh, for the, to maintain and satisfy that public records request. Mm -hmm. So when you compile that, you know, we can provide the directory, but right now there does not exist a email uh, complete list or a database or anything else that, that I'm sorry, it, a database does exist, but we have not pulled that information out. I mean, our Thank information you. sheets aren't electronically captured someplace? They're captured as an image, but that still requires, so in other words, they're captured fully so this way. So and they're also, in... but they're also entered into our database, which we do not extrapolate data out of right now. Thank you. Okay, Dottie. Yes, very interesting conversation. Um, so uh, this is Dottie um, for, on Zoom. I am supportive of both at this point in time, the uh, online directory, password protected. I know there's a way to do the password protection, not with a generic access, but an individual owner access. Um, I'm not sure what that would look like. That would be what Lee would find out. But there's a way of doing that. I would not support a generic access that can be passed on to anybody like we have our Wi-Fi code. I think we should print out directories um, at the minimum level. There is usually a certain quantity that must be purchased to uh, just to have a directory. So I would recommend that rather than 500 or pick a number. Um, the online is, would it be sortable? Because we have a lot of people in the park who have different last names living in the same home. My home is, is one of those. And the person that's listed, I'm not sure how they select that, but my husband's name was listed, but mine isn't. And it might be in this most current uh, version, but previously it had not been. And we have a lot of residents who have dual name households and I have kept every single directory since I moved to the park and I have referred back to them on various um, times, mostly to look up people that I know the name, but not where they live. Um, so that I think would still be interesting uh, or uh, important to have, 
but sortable online so we can find names that we can't get in the directory easily. And when people choose opt in and opt out, do they opt in, opt out only for the online version or is it on the form that um, says, I don't want to be in a directory because I don't remember doing that, but it might be there. Um, I think it's important to continue it and, uh, and to include the online version password protected. Thank you. Okay, any other? There, there is no opt in, opt out on the current people. On the current, right. Form. We would have to add that and then go forward. We're going to have this discussion again, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I wish it was just easy to say, yeah, we're going to have a telephone book. We're going to go to the web and have it on there. It's not that simple. Right. So what would you like me to do? I'm not going to go out and do a survey to see how many people want a telephone book. Well, that, you, that's a waste of time. Did you get a sta statement from Andy about... That, and that's where the opt-in, opt-out came from. To keep I think there was a comment like, made about the park manager is going to do some research on the password protecting or something about the online. I would suggest we start there and find out the details. Of doing yeah, we've worked like with that. Streamline already. Uh, okay. It can be done. Uh, I, there is just a few things that we had questions on to see just how protective that password and username may be. Okay. So I think I'm at a standstill. So what I think I'll do is do some more research this with Mr. Morris and I'll bring it back at another meeting. I don't think we're going to make a decision today. It's not on the... Uh, no. Good. Thank you. Okay. I'll stop that one there. So we'll let's move on to the uh, finalize the move to the new maintenance building. And Mr. Lombardi is not here. Uh, I think Mr. Moore, can you pick this up, or should we skip this? No, I can. I can pick it up, sir. Okay. I'd like to uh, also include the uh, maintenance supervisor in this discussion. It does not need to be interactive as he staff. But Bill, could you come up too, please? So. You're going to have to help me fill in some of the blanks because some of this was prior to my uh, my hire. Uh, back in late 22, the uh, maintenance trustee uh, and the board authorized a move from the old maintenance building to the new maintenance building, which is the old uh, fire station. Uh, at the same time that happened, there was, uh, they moved their stuff in there, but it was not complete. There's still stuff in the old maintenance building. At the same time, or a few months later, then uh, all the materials for rebuilding the dock works at the marina uh, occupied the center bay and spilled over into the uh, first bay also. As of today, shore uh, interiors are working on the docks using that material that is in the center bay and it's gone down considerably. Correct. And they should be finished by Friday-ish, Monday? Friday to early next week, yes. Okay. So all that material that it was in there is going to be out. Um, it would make sense for the, the maintenance division to move the rest of their stuff over, at least the stuff that should come over, and that we should clean out the old maintenance building because I believe there's people that want to look at some temporary uses of that. But the new maintenance building is a fire station and it needs to be converted into a maintenance shop. And uh, it's gonna take a budget to do this. And we've uh, worked together uh, to figure out the kinds of things that we needed. Uh, and, and a lot of this stuff is just, you know, workbenches and shelves, shelving units, uh, bins with, uh, we have to uh, fa uh, put fasteners in there so that we're not running to Home Depot every 15 minutes, which is a, a time waster. Uh, you know, 
lighting, uh, storage racks, again, power extension cords coming off the ceiling, safety equipment, power tools, uh, tool storage, workbenches, that kind of stuff. So the budget that we established for that was $16,350. Um, and the majority, the largest single outlay of that is for uh, storage racks from Sam's Club for about $3,500 and workbenches at about $1,000. Um, so we, we attach a spreadsheet to that. Um, we're just trying to get this thing moving so that we can continue and get them in there, throw the rest of the stuff out of there, and that we're in there permanently and they're no longer trying to split between two buildings. Did I sum that up? It's pretty good. Okay. Oh, I, I can't do that. I, Lori, I, 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 I've got two things. One, um, as you're doing anything lighting in the bay, be really careful because as I recall, half of them were incandescent and half of them are fluorescent and it or LED, I mean, and you know you can't mix them and all of that stuff, right? Well, our intention is, is to, make to them, relight the building also. Okay, but I just want to make needs. sure that you knew that there's a mixed, and as I understand it, you can't always tell them just looking at them. We were, our guys were supposed to put labels on them, what was LED. Just be real careful. That's all. Well, while we're remodeling, one of our intentions and some of those prices that are mm -hmm. in there will include us going it's through the wiring of the building right. because our needs will be different than what the fire department did. Right. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure that, that was drawn to your attention. And then the other thing is in the list of stuff, it says an ice maker. The fire department had an ice maker. I know it had to be cleaned um, because it was, it hadn't been cleaned and it wasn't for, it was non potable. Um, as the fire to station closed, does that that unfortunately we invested some money in repairing that? Yep, but it needed more than okay. It so like, it's it's it's, it's gone kaput. It passed on. Yes, and, and and so did you did our old maintenance building have a ice maker? No, ma'am. Do we? Why do we need an ice maker? I'm sorry. I'm, that well, during after. the summertime when you're out there working, you, you need, need to it. keep. Yeah, I can I can buy that. I just needed to ask. Yeah. Because I'm not the only one that knows all these no had questions about the ice maker. All right, cool. Thank you. I just no problem. Does this cost include uh bringing up to date the plumbing and electrical to code? Because that's probably important for the engine. Yes, again, as I said, as as we go through the building, our first intention is to clear the firehouse of anything that we don't need stuff left over from the mm -hmm. fire department and we will be going through maintenance uh property uh, we've been updating a lot of things over the past couple of years which means we're holding on to a lot of things that we no longer possess replacement parts for things we don't own anymore uh, so we'll be going through all that we'll be going through the plumbing we'll be going through the electric and the air system as far as supplying air to guns and things like that so we will go through all that as we're there, and we will update it. You'll notice that we put in uh, $500 for dumpsters, one at the uh, new fire barn and one at the maintenance building to get all that stuff cleaned out of there. And from what it looks like, it's going to take a dumpster easy. So you're not just going to overload our regular dumpsters? <laughs> <laughs> Does any of this include labor? Are we are we looking at that as far as what expenditure is taking you, your crews away from mm -hmm. their normal duties and stuff? Are we considering whether somebody needs to come in and be mm -hmm. the labor part of this or or is this just you doing the work and hopefully getting the best price for what you've got? We do consider labor when we look at these projects. Um, we believe that we can do it without the support of anybody from outside. And, and that, where, that's where one of the reasons why you have full-time staff is that it, it displaces bringing in a service. Right. But in, we, we talked about this, is there a contractor that can do this, but it's too, it's too buried, you know, that you, if you brought someone in to say, build mm -hmm. this for us, you're looking at a quarter of a million dollars. Right. I mean, it's not. I, I think what I, what I hear what Russell ask is this going to lead to overtime that we should account for on the no no cost? okay no okay we do everything we can to avoid overtime to the uh -huh. park 
So, and we appreciate that. I, I think question. I think the price, the cost, seems very reasonable for, yeah. for what all you need to do to get it up to snuff and in a nicer building and everything. Does this empty out the old mm -hmm. maintenance building? Is mm -hmm. it like by the time we're done, yes, ready yeah. to be yeah. repurposed, re reimagined, reimagined? Yeah. Very re <laughs> Disney of you. Thank you. Now the old maintenance building is not air conditioned. Am I no, correct? No, ma'am. Okay. The only part that's air conditioned in the new building is our break room and the office area. Okay. No, we don't have intentions of air conditioning the base. Oh no, I knew that. I was just asking, just just to you know about the old building, about when we look at reimagining it. There's just two air conditioners in there. <laughs> window yeah. air conditioners. Yeah, window bangers. Yep. And we, when we do clear the old maintenance shop and the firehouse of anything that we do not need, we will evaluate whether it's sellable or not and safe enough to sell. Mm -hmm. And those things that are usable or, or reimagined, uh, we will give to the fire barn, uh, the firehouse sales, for them to possibly sell off. We won't just throw them away because we don't need them anymore. Okay, any other discussion? Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Okay, and then the last item we have was the uh, revised budget calendar. <laughs> Um, who do I have on that one? That's probably me. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no great uh, revelation here. We're just, we're just pushing everything to 5:21 for the public hearing. It'll be noticed. Uh, needs 30 days notice, and with the, uh, we also need a little bit of time. Uh, we wanted to finalize the special assessment payments coming in on March 31st. So everything was just a little bit too tight. Uh, there and our treasurer is is heavily involved in the uh, special assessment payoff. And uh, by the way, on on that note, I don't want to steal your thunder. I don't want to steal your thunder. You're not stealing my thunder. Um, we did reach what's what's called what we called critical mass on the special assessment payoff. Mm -hmm. We needed twenty five thousand dollars as a minimum payment. We passed that a long time ago, so that's good news. Mm -hmm. So the, the payoff will go forward. Uh, but we also feel, uh, the treasurer and I, and our council that we need to present to a certain degree, a special debt budget also that will uh, go along with the final, uh, there's not really much that's, there's no, there's no assessments that's already been figured out. There's no changing anything. It's just so that the board realizes that there's a debt budget going in here uh, also. That is for the marina, whatever's left on the marina. So we've already achieved all our, gotten all our money back from the county that's coming back to us. And this will be the last mm -hmm. thing that we're basically. Mm -hmm. so. Taxes are still payable till the 31st of March. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, they're, they're, they're payable year round. Yeah. But the point is, is that, no, we don't ever, we're never, we're never get our assessments paid in full at any, by any given time. Okay. Uh, if someone chooses not to pay their taxes and they do not pay their assessment, then the county sells a tax certificate. And then if it doesn't sell, it, it, there's a long right. process that goes on with that. But what we are talking about is the special assessment for the marina work that was done. Mm -hmm. There was a payoff last year mm -hmm. and there's the final payoff this year and the debt budget of what's possibly the balance there yeah. needs to be recognized. Okay by this board as it goes through. It's okay. Essentially, it'll just be a status of the bond balance. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. And the, you said you over, that went over this last time that we offered it. So there's less of it now yeah. for sure. We had to get $25,000 in mm -hmm. payments okay. for regions to accept the, accept the prepayment. And we satisfied that, that easy, okay. easily. We flew past that. Good. <clears throat> okay. Any other discussion? Okay, the last item we had there was, uh, was it reserving functions or reservation functions? Um, it was the reservation for function, a discussion about that. Okay, go ahead. 
Okay. All right. So I had submitted um, as a trustee to have a friends giving lunch uh, for Thanksgiving Day, and it the form was returned to me saying declined. We don't schedule on Thanksgiving or the day after. Mm -hmm. And I went back and looked at the calendar, and I can see various functions on holidays. And I didn't understand why. I mean, I know what it says, but I didn't know of a policy that we didn't schedule functions for the park residents on a holiday when we do have a history of doing that. Maybe not as a trustee, but we do have a history. You know, Christmas is on Christmas and there's other events on a holiday. So I wanted to start the discussion about why don't we schedule? Is there a policy written somewhere? Because I didn't see it on my continuing rec um, outline of duties or somewhere else. So I don't know what to go. I don't know where to go with this conversation, except I want to bring it up. Well, if I remember right, this is just an offshoot of your uh, continuing rep pop luck that's on that same Tuesday or the Tuesday of the same week. And then no, what I is, to look at is that Thanksgiving. is huh? this is Thanksgiving Day in November. Yeah. And which is uh, th November 28th. And so I wanted to last year, there was a Friendsgiving um, luncheon, I believe, not a dinner that was held and there has been um comments made to me about continuing that and there are a lot of our park residents who do not have family to go to uh, they don't leave the park for thanksgiving etc and i thought this would be a good function to continue so i wanted to reserve the space for it and that was the response that i got so i i didn't i want to bring it forward well i don't think we have any staff here that we don't. On Thanksgiving. We don't. How would do these setups and everything be? Mm -hmm. Okay, because bingo was set up the day before. Bingo was set up the same way that Thanksgiving would be set up with the tables. My recommendation is to leave it, I mean, leave it the way it is. They're not going to come in and tear it down because bingo's in the evening. Staff don't work the next day. I understand that. Um, so leave it, leave it the way it is. We can use it. Let's say set up until Monday when we've got staff. That's fine with me. I mean, but there's a dance on the 30th, which I've already put my reservation form in. Dottie, are you requesting this as a trustee for you to be liable and in charge of this? Or are you requesting this as public? No, it, it's through no. the continuing work program. Mm -hmm. Right. As a trustee, to your, your question. So I understand the staffing. That was the first thing I thought of, um, but I didn't see anything written anywhere other than just using your logic about staffing. Um, but the comment was, we don't schedule on Thanksgiving or the day after, and we obviously do have events. And I think it's an important day. And I thought, because because bingo is there on, um, somebody takes down from bingo, I'm assuming. I don't know when they take it down, but because the setup is the same way that would be used for Thanksgiving, that we don't need to have staff come in and do tables and chairs on Thanksgiving Day. Well, your budget does include uh, tear down and set up for uh, bingo because church is in the hall Sunday morning. They empty the hall, then p then uh, pickleball plays. They put their nets away, and then I believe it's your budget pays for someone to come in. And set up bingo. Well, she has a dance bit. in between. Well, I have a dance on the third. I, I don't have. I don't have Sunday morning Saturday. pickleball and then bingo. I, 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 don't, don't. I don't have a defined budget. Um, it's combined with seasonal. No, no it's no, not. You have your own budget. You, uh, no, no, you, ha you have your own budget, Dottie. Oh boy. Okay. Well, let me just okay. Have, okay. Friendsgiving. When you and I discussed Friendsgiving, when we met a few months back, we were looking at. Tuesday, November 26th. Correct. And that was the date that you and I had discussed. Um, as far as staff coming out on a holiday, I, I understand what you're saying. I really do. Um, because Lori and I had a conversation about this takedown from the New Year's Eve dance on New Year's Day. And she said, 
you know, you have the hall, the New Year's Day. There's no bingo that Sunday because staff doesn't work on New Year's Day. And I get that because our staff does need time off. But on the, on the 30th, we would have to have someone and take everything down and clean. There's a dance that night. So staff would have to come in. Maintenance person would have to come on the 30th. From bingo. No, the 30th is a Saturday. I understand, but bingo is set up just like she's talking about what would be set up. Right. right. No, I'm talking about so. past, past that. If they did the setup, if they did the setup Wednesday night for bingo and they kept it open for thanks for Friendsgiving, that hall would not be used by anybody until the 30th. Which means no activities would take place. So if the budget includes take set up and take down, there's nothing in the budget to do set up and take down on a holiday. What do they do for Christmas? We pay they, 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 the, they pay the private extra. the private group that put that does Christmas dinner pay. pays staff special right. to to come in and set up and tear down. So what does that cost? The the group that that's part of the ticket sales when we sell tickets for Christmas dinner that's also paying for the the cost of having have, hiring someone to set up and tear down the room clean it up. And what's the so harm of doing Thanksgiving on November twenty sixth? They did it this. They did it last year. The third two. The third Tuesday. Uh -huh. Because I want to have it on Thanksgiving, Christmas. When we have the when they have the Christmas dinner, there's a whole different atmosphere, and to have residents come in on Christmas Day, just there's a different atmosphere, and I think Thanksgiving should be on Thanksgiving. So, and I don't, I, I don't understand why the pushback. Um, I understand about the understand about the staffing. Okay, so if the staffing can be paid through clubs, can we do it? I mean, why? I don't understand. So the takedown would have to be on if we left the bingo tables up mm -hmm. from from Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then took down the uh, Thanksgiving, you know, move the tables out or changed or put away. Um, after the Thanksgiving luncheon mm -hmm. paid by a club, is that possible? Well, Dottie, let me go this way. Uh, when you get back in town, why don't you get with uh, Lori and reschedule or try to get work these bugs out? I don't think that this is something I want to. Okay, I just wanted to raise, the, raise the question. Uh, it, it, okay. Uh, this is something that you can work with the. Uh, secretary on on the reservations in private all right i'm fine with that great thank you okay let's go off with the informational reports from the trustees rod you want to start us off yeah um not much is happening we've been making our rounds um wrote a few violations not bad people are starting to clean stuff up the big thing is a reminder now with the hurricane season coming upon us and and the snowbirds headed back north uh, to make sure uh, you get uh, get your stuff all picked up and put away so it doesn't blow through your window or the neighbor's window. And just be be sure about that. Uh, make sure you let uh, CERT know you're going to be gone and the information. So if there are damages when they go through the park, they can uh, contact you and let you know that. So. That's pretty much it. The things are starting to look good. And then as you're as you're leaving, like I say, clean up. Make sure your property's in good shape and make sure you have somebody to take care of your uh, property uh, while you're gone, yards and, and et cetera. Okay? Thank you. Russell? I don't have anything to follow up with that. Cindy? Yeah, we have the blood drive this, uh, the 21st. Uh, not too many people signed up. I think we did have 60 people last year that just showed up. But you can make an appointment if you don't want to wait or anything. It's 8 to 12 on Thursday. Uh, the AED and um, CPR training and choking training will be the 27th. The fire department is coming in to do that training. And if you don't know what an AED is, it's um, the machines we have in every building that if somebody would have a heart attack, uh, you could get shocked and come back to life. So I think those are real important, especially if you're full-time here 
uh, or if you do pickleball or any of the exercise classes or anything that's assertive, I would think that would be important for at least a couple people in the class to know, because it would be a shame if we lost somebody for no reason. So please sign up in the office for the AED training so that they have enough handouts to uh, give out to all the people that will be here. And it'll be in Mark's Hall on the 27th. What time? Uh, it's one to two. Thank you. One to two here. Great. Thank you. Dottie? Okay, yes. Um, we had coffee break on Saturday the 16th, and I want to thank the volunteers who stepped up and took care of that for me while I was gone. Uh, the different clubs that, that provided presentations, the Pickleball Club and the Bocce Club and the Fun Singers were also there providing entertainment, as well as a special leprechaun um, showed up. <laughs> that was a surprise get a surprise visitor. The potluck is tonight, um, and I will. The summer schedule is almost complete, and I'm going to have that posted uh, probably within this next week. Thank you. Great, thank you. Yep. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Since last board meeting, we've had a few things going on. On March 7th, we had the John Rennell Quartet. Um, the contract cost for this was $775. Um, at the door, we had 669 taken in. 134 people attended. Um, this was a wonderful show. It's a shame that we had um, a small attendance. It was a perfect night for dancing. Um, I thank uh, Carol and, and Wes and Bonnie and Patty for doing the doors for me that night. On March 9th, we had the Byrne Brothers Irish Show. Uh, their contract cost is $2,200. And we took in that night $1,032. We had uh, 206 people attending. And I, I believe me, this was the best show time we've ever had that I've ever seen. Um, those that went there said it was just absolutely wonderful to watch. I think a lot of folks were surprised about the quality of entertainment. And I want to thank the Atwoods and Diana and her friend for uh, doing the doors that night. And then on March 12th, we had the gospel show featuring the Trailer Estates trio. That was Dino, Hope, and Robert. Um, the men's Bible group worked the doors that night. It was a small crowd, but of those that came really enjoyed it. So thank you. And last Saturday, we had our St. Pat's dance with the Paisley Craze Band. Their contract cost was $1,500, and we brought in $390. We had 52 guests coming in, and the $50.50 for the district was $205. Um, I want to thank the four folks in the computer club that helped out that night. Um, coming up, we have just one event this week. This is the Beach Party Happy Hour Dance on Thursday, March 21st. It is from 5 to 8 at the Beach Pavilion. Um, all beach parking areas and the shuttle begins at 3 o'clock. And please, no sooner. Come down. We need time to get things ready. Um, the uh, shuttle... We'll go from the back of the large hall parking lot down to the beach area. We'll drop you off and then come back. It's a constant looping. Last week, we sold 197 meals, which I thought was really great for the first time doing it. So if you did purchase a meal, please bring your meal tickets. Without that, sorry, you won't get your food. Um, the dinner line begins at 5. The DJ will be Yaya Diamond. She'll begin at 5 as well. This is a free event for everyone, but please make sure that you have your park issued IDs. It is not for the outside community. And we're going to ask that please do not bring your pets. Okay. Um, we've had some dogs running loose at some beach events, and we really don't want that for this. So please don't do that. And I've had a few questions on Facebook, which I can't respond to. So I'm going to answer all the Facebook questions now. Um Please do not bring food to pass. We're not doing that this year. So don't do that. We're not, we're not set up for it. But you may bring your own food down to eat yourself. That's fine. Um, please bring your own refreshments. We're not going to provide any drinks or ice. 
And again, we ask that you not come down till three o'clock so that we have time to get everything ready for you. Um, and make use of a shuttle. This, this is the first time we've done it. And we have some really fun drivers. we will make it really fun for you all. Hint, hint, back there. Um, so it's going to be a fun night. If you went last year, please come back. And we heard some grumblings about last year. We've really improved it. You know, you have to do one to know what you're doing. So join us for our last big bash. And thank you, everybody, the 20 people who have who are going to volunteer that night. Um, parking lot people, we poured about a quarter to three. You'll have vests. Everybody's going to have volunteer badges. We look very official Thursday night. Food people, we poured around 4.30-ish. So thank you all. I'll see you down the beach. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Lewis? Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, this week, we've spent some time working on updating some procedural documentation for the audit, which mainly included adding the park manager into a lot of our procedures. And um, we also have been uh, getting ready to post the payoff amounts for the special assessment so we can update the tax rolls so those folks aren't billed for the special assessment if they've already paid it off when the September tax, tax rolls come out. Uh, one thing that I have to get seriously busy on this week is the tangible asset tax filing for Manatee County, which I have to admit, I don't understand why we have to file that when we don't pay taxes, but they demand it. So off we go. And actually it's, it's, it's not as horrid as it sounds because they send back everything that we've claimed the year before. And you just have to update it with, we'll have, we, we have new golf carts, new TVs, things like that. We have to make sure we add on. And then spending time with the park manager working on the budget going forward. And that's what I'm up to. Great. Thank you. I have nothing to report. Mr. Morris, your report, please. Um, do you I get two? No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I got everybody. That, 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 was, that, was, a, that was a really nice try. <laughs> <laughs> Went around the table. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I'm current with reservations. Please check the website calendar right away to ensure no, no errors were made. Location, time, grill, kitchen, fob, that sort of stuff. And then check it again the week prior to ensure there were no changes that had to be made. Um, I do not have a reservation forms for eight groups, Beautification Club, Euchre, Jammers, Joker Rummy, Masonic Square Club, Poker, Pinnacle, Rummy Cube, and Wee Bowling. Um, I need to get reservations for the May 1st through April 30th, 2025. Recurring reservations. Remember, you need to submit a copy of your bylaws and list of officers or for less formal groups, a PP39 club group purpose and contact information form for your group. I must have these before I can process any recurring room reservations. Um, and I'm on track with the usual one week, blah, one week turnaround time. Pickleball was in, excluded from this list as I meet with Phyllis in late March to do the pickleball schedule, which is also holding up the beginner's pickleball schedule. I do that all at the same time after everybody else is booked. And that's it. Sorry. The year you're, you're I'm just giving you grief. Uh, you did not have my feelings a bit. Sure. Is Jammers a club? Yep. Oh, I don't that. They have a recurring reservation every Friday. They got to be a club. Okay. Okay, Mr. Morris. You must be the president. <laughs> All right. Want to remind everybody this weekend, uh, March 23rd, Saturday from 9 to 11, we have a shredding truck coming in. And they'll park right here. If you have old checks, uh, tax returns, anything, they'll take them and they will shred them uh, in front of your face at no charge. Uh, Russell, we need to get those publishers clearinghouse giant checks. You can take those over to be shredded also. <laughs> Thanks. What day was that again? I'm sorry, Lee. March 23rd, this Thank Saturday uh, from 9 a.m. to 11 Thank you, got it. And you can just come by with your car, your golf cart, hand us a box of stuff, and we'll make sure it gets shredded. Smoke detector installation uh, in uh, from the Red Cross is April 20th. Uh, you must be home from 9 to 2 p.m. Uh, what this uh, program is, is that the Red Cross will uh, give you free smoke detectors for your mobile home. 
and even install them and tell you how to use them. Uh, you just need to fill out a form in the office uh, and they're available right now. Uh, we did it once already last year. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we just want to remind you that, especially in mobile homes, you have a lot less time to get out if there is a fire. And a lot of people block their second door and that's a no-no, but uh, a smoke detector greatly increases your chances of not getting injured or uh, or getting caught in that fire. Um, wanted to remind everybody that next door there's a presidential preference preference election uh, going on uh, that if you need to vote, please do so. And uh, last item, since uh, uh, Trustee Lombardi is not here, the docks are being worked on and being re uh, put have new Trex decking put down on them. Uh, so be careful when you're down there. Uh, uh, and that should be completed by early next week. And uh, we've been waiting on that for a long time. So that's good. And I also think the damaged dock is repaired. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think I skipped over the violation report. Do we have anything with the violation report? This is the second uh, meeting of this month. We only do it the first. Perfect. We're good. Okay, and I don't think we have any unfinished business. And with that, I will adjourn the meeting at 11. It's 11 o'clock, I can't see. 11.01. 11.01. And then I'd like to take a recess uh, for about 10 minutes. If you would, please turn off your microphones.
Okay. Uh, thank you for coming back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call to order the regular board meeting for March 19, 2024 at 11.13. Do we have the roll call again, please? Sure. Lori Dalton here. Dottie Deerwester. Present on Zoom. Kathy Gregory. Present. Todd Lombardi. Absent. Russell McAllister. Present. Louis Nichols. Present. Cindy O'Brien. Present. Rod Smith. Present. Dwayne Trotter. Present. Lee Morris. Present. Okay. I'd like to have public comment. Do I have a video on Zoom that would like to make a public comment? Hearing none, I'll close public comment. We'll jump right into the approval of the minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the March 5th, 2024 board workshop meeting? So move. Do I have a second? Second. Pick second. Oh. a second for me, Rod. Okay. Are there any corrections to those minutes? I didn't receive any corrections. Great. All those in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The minutes are approved. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the March 5th, 2024 regular board meeting? I'll make that. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> are there any corrections to those minutes? I didn't receive any in the mail, in Thank the you. email. All those in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The minutes are approved. Uh, could we have their treasurer's report, please? Current balance of the region's uh, business checking account. The balance of the region's money market, $2,018.31. Within that is the seawall loan of $176,129.53. The uh, proceeds from the fire department, $271,350.20. Special assessment fund, $26,358.77. And the Balance is our operating fund and reserve, which is $1,526,179.81. Great. Is there a motion to approve the treasury report? I'll, mo I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the treasury report is read. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The report is approved. Do we have any bills? No, sir. All right. I like it. Okay. The first item we have is the uh, proposed uh, O&M budget. Mr. Nichols. I'd like to make a motion that we send out the proposed O&M operating maintenance budget for fiscal year 2024-25 to residents for requirements. I'll second that. Any discussion? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can we add a separate, can we separate seasonal and continuing rec mm -hmm. on that budget? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> so we have to make a new motion? No, but you no. have to send me a new attachment A because I've got to attach it in with the minutes. Okay. Okay, all those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Second item we have is the establish a trailer estate's Facebook page. And that was myself. And I can't read it. Oh, I guess I can. Can I read my own? Yeah, you. All right. Uh, I make a motion to establish an official trailer estate's Facebook page with outgoing content only. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? The question, who's going to maintain the page? The office and my two 
um, web administrators. Okay. And it'll only be our people posting things. Nobody else will be allowed to post anything. Correct. Outgoingly. And is this this is going to be uh, who's going to maintain residents only or owners only? Are the webmaster and that's going to no, go through the No, it, it's not that way. Uh, oh, okay. This is going to be just information if we have hurricanes coming up, uh, mm -hmm. the different activities that we have going on in the park, uh, important uh, policy and procedure changes. Uh, it's all the same that stuff that's on the, on the website. Right. Just as I understand it, Facebook mm -hmm. will push it out to people who are friends and that sort of stuff. Okay. Uh, For so example, the other day, I get a text message from our illustrious chairman. I just got a call. Someone's delivering a lot of uh, shrimp to the post office. <laughs> get the word out. A lot of shrimp. And sure enough, some guy shows up with a trailer full of cases of shrimp, 100 cases or so. We had nowhere. We had no way to get the word out fast. We put it on seven thirty-two. So I actually went out to the pool and made an announcement as I got run over. <laughs> you know, going out of the pool. But this would have been a perfect vehicle to put it on Facebook to get rid of that current you know, before it melted. So, mm -hmm. and who's the five hundred going to? That's going to cost us to do this. We're not sure it's going to be five hundred, but we're going to hire a professional uh, to set the page up so that there's no posting and how it and make sure that we have what we need we also are going to take over an existing page so that's going to be a little bit more challenging and i profess that i'm not super facebook you're taking over and, the... and i am not facebook what, at all what, Zero. So you're taking over what well there's an existing page that we're looking at possibly taking over Paris that State? was an official page mm -hmm. okay it has one. It has a picture of the sign and everything. Like there's that. there's not a huge amount of people on it, but it just says official, and it might be easier to establish that okay. than doing a new one. And I was surprised at how fast 120 cases of slim plant. <laughs> <laughs> did you get one? Yes, I did. Good. Yes, I did. I got one. They're very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. You never, you never know what kind of text that. you're going to get from the chairman. Yes. Yeah. Are there any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Next item we have is the uh, finalization, I'm sorry, finalize the move to the maintenance building. Uh, it's Mr. Lombardi. You want me to read the motion? I guess, please. Because I support it. Um, all right. Uh, I make a motion to finalize the move to the new maintenance shop by establishing the project the project budget of sixteen thousand three hundred and fifty dollars per the attached spreadsheet. Do I have a second? I second that. Who? Russell. Russell. I heard him speak first. All those in favor? I'm sorry. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Um, I don't have anything else on there, do I? Uh, do we have any final trustee uh, staff comments? Hearing none, do we have any unfinished business? None. With that, I'll adjourn the meeting at 11.22. Please turn off your microphones.